just want to share a little bit of something different with you today other than the Psalms uh, from, from the Gospel of Luke. Last Monday, we were in staff meeting and we were talking about the situation uh, related to COVID and how we had to back down on some things and shut small groups back down for a season. And then uh, just, just a different, and somebody made the comment uh, that we're having to learn to be Mary's rather than Martha. And so we've kind of got a tag around the office now that, that we're living in, in, Marth, in Mary's style rather than Martha style. And so um, I, I thought about that in particular in this season. We're so uh, hectic and running around. Good morning, Jennifer. Good to see you back on this morning. Uh, we're running around hectic and all kinds of things to do that it's, that it's hard to be a Mary instead of a Martha. But we recognize and realize that in our church life and the program, I hate to use the word program, but the, the scheduling of things and activities that, that take place, sometimes when we slip into that Martha mode, we depend less on the Holy Spirit and we trust more in our own devices to make disciples. And um, I've recognized, though, that during this merry time in the church, at least here at, at First Conyers, we've seen more people come to Christ and baptisms uh, than we did uh, months prior to COVID. And I'm wondering that if it's not that we've, we've just begun to focus on those things that are, are essential, those things that are right, those things that are necessary, uh, really the mission that we have to win people to Jesus, to make disciples of them, and to send them to make other disciples. And so and this morning, I, I want to encourage us that, that um, yeah, it's necessary to have Marthas, those that, that get things done, those that plan and those that uh, take care of activities. But the more important thing in this account in Luke's gospel in chapter 10 is that, that we need to be Mary's rather than all Martha's. Listen to the story again. Now, as they went out on their way, Jesus entered a village and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. Wouldn't you have loved to have been there and listened to his teaching firsthand? Um, I'm, I'm quite sure that it would have been much different uh, than, uh, than just rushing through and reading his words as recorded in Scripture. But Mary was just sitting there listening at Jesus' feet. That's one of the reasons we do this daily devotion is that we'll at least take some time to pause in our day and just to sit at his feet and hear his word and let him nourish us, encourage us, exhort us through his word. His word by the Holy Spirit is what really connects us with his heart um, it, it, it is where we see his nature and character revealed. It's where our lives are reflected through scripture and we see where we are in relation to him and in our fellowship with him. And so here we see Mary just sitting at the feet of Jesus. I don't know if you're like me, but oftentimes um, it's easy to get started in the day's work. There are so many tasks ahead of us every day that we want to get accomplished, that we want to get done. Some are put on us by pressure, that we're under timelines and schedules. And it's easy for me, because I'm a task-oriented person, it's easy for me to just get started in the day and not sit at his feet. Uh, but I'm learning how very important it is just to sit at his feet and, and listen to him speak to me. I used to have a reading plan in Scripture that uh, that caused me to want to read through the Bible in one year. And I recognized that as I was doing that, that really I was reading five chapters or so a day <clears throat> of Scripture. And it became more of a task rather than listening to his voice. And so I scrapped that plan. And it's not easy for me to scrap things once I've started because I like to finish things. But I threw that plan out and I said, you know what? I'm just going to begin taking time in his word and just reflecting and meditating on a few verses or a passage. 
And if that leads into more reading, then that's okay. But I wanted to come away from my time with him in the Word, knowing that I have heard from him, that I've connected with him and met with his heart. And there's, you know, one morsel of meat uh, can give us far more nutrition than a whole plate of pasta. Does that make sense? Pasta is full of carbs, and it can fill our stomach. That's why when we eat Chinese food, it seems like an hour after we've eaten the Chinese food, we're hungry again. That's because it's more balanced with carbohydrates than protein. And so a little morsel of meat from God's Word, spiritually speaking, to feed our soul is far better uh, than a plate of pasta. And so here again, Mary is just sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And we can be like Martha, right? That we can be distracted from sitting at Jesus' feet and being nourished by his words, being edified by his word, getting energy, getting strength, getting truth from his word, and scurrying around with all kinds of tasks and be distracted from communing with him, fellowship with him, touching his heart, letting, letting him touch our heart through his words. So she's distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. Jesus, don't you see that I'm trying to get everything prepared? Jesus, don't you see that, that I'm trying to, to plan this event? I'm trying to plan that event. Jesus, don't you see that I'm trying to get everybody in, involved that I can to get on board with this thing that we're going to do? And, 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 and Mary over here, rather than jumping in and helping, she's just sitting at your feet. And Jesus says to her, but the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha. I love that. Martha, Martha. <laughs> the second time he says her name to get her attention. Martha, Martha. You are anxious and you're troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Underline that word, necessary. The many things will never get accomplished in the power of the Holy Spirit and his working through them if we're so distracted and concerned about all those little things that need to be done. Mary is doing that which is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. And so I want to encourage you, not only during this Christmas season and Christmas time, uh, to, to, to be Mary, not to be Martha, um, and beyond this season of Christmas, to learn to be Mary's and not Martha's. I think of it in the scale of, of the church, the body of the church, the body of Christ. I, I'm convinced that so many of those little things that we were doing pre-COVID were Martha things, and they were keeping us from doing that which was necessary, and that is spending time with Him. Because I'm telling you, when you spend time with Him, you, you can't help but know that he has, he has commissioned you and me to be on mission with him and serendipitously as we go on our way to make disciples of other people. I had a text this morning that I received from Leah Petresca, and I want to share that text with you. Uh, she gave me permission to share this text. She says, good morning, Pastor. I just feel the Holy Spirit is encouraging me to share this with you. How God works miracles when we listen to his whispered voice. Notice that. She was listening to the voice of God, being a Mary, hearing, and how God spoke in that time. After yesterday morning's devotion that you had, my prayer was, Lord, I don't know how you'll send me in my path for me to bless or to be your hands and your feet. But you prepare me and you give me all I need to accomplish that. And right after about 30 minutes, he sent me to Newton Piedmont Hospital to just supposedly drop off a phone charger. It turned out to be a whole day spent in the hospital 
with a person that I never thought I would ever be able to talk with the way that I did yesterday. But that was God's working, giving me every word I needed and for that person to receive it and acknowledge the truth of where he was standing, it was only God, meaning where he was standing with God. He went there with symptoms of a heart attack, which it turned out to only be a lot of stress that had built up in his life. It's a long story, but to make it short, he repented of a lot of things. And for God to use this situation at the right time, even though it was in the hospital, that was the right time for this person and for God to use this gentleman's dad situation that had previously happened four years ago. The same incident of getting him into the hospital, he realized how much God actually loves him and is giving him another chance. Pastor, I give thanks to God for using you in our lives and in this church body. This gentleman is from a previous church where we used to go before. And I haven't really talked to him a lot since that time, but God can break through a hard-hearted a hard hearted person um, if we allow him to, which that's what he was doing in this, means heart. But, but not only that God worked in this man's heart, he also works in my life. Thanks again. You see, this person, Leah, had, had been listening to the voice of the Lord. And, and she prayed in agreement, that prayer, that exhortation, God used me today in some way. And she heard the voice of the Lord, and God had sent her to the hospital. She had no idea that it would wind up being a whole day there at the hospital. And this person repented of their sins, repented of a lot of things in their life. And now we trust is back in fellowship with the Lord. Um, she also went on to say this, it's so amazing to see how God works, even in my coworkers' hearts, meaning that they would understand and didn't give me a hard time when I just sent them a text message saying that I needed to take some time off from work yesterday. Uh, God works in the hearts of individuals and God will open doors. Let's learn to be a Mary. And let's be open to how the Lord might want to use us to share his story with somebody. Maybe it's just a word of testimony. Um, maybe it's that we have an opportunity to plant a seed. Maybe it's that we have an opportunity to cultivate, as uh, Leah did yesterday, that word that this person evidently, I think, is already a believer, but had, had steered away from the Lord and was, was involved in things that they didn't need to be involved in. They repented now and back in fellowship. Or maybe that God will give you an opportunity to, uh, to, by his grace, to be a part of reaping of the harvest of a soul. And um, don't you love telling the story of Jesus and what he's doing in your life? We want to remember today also to pray for Jim Bohan. And Jim's usually on here every morning, but uh, he's having shoulder surgery today. So let's, let's pray for him and that and others I know that need prayer. But... Let's just sing this old song. I love to tell the story. I love to tell the story of unseen things above. Jesus and his glory. Of Jesus and his love. I love.
I tell it now to thee. I love to tell the story. To you be my theme in glory. To tell the old, old story of Jesus and I love to tell the story, displeasing to repeat. It seems each time I tell it, more wonderfully sweet. I love to tell the story. For some have never heard the message of salvation from God's own holy word. I love to tell the story for those who know it best. So hungering and thirsty to hear it like the rest, and when in scenes of glory I sing the new, new song to be the old, old story that I I love to tell, sing it out. I love to tell the story. It'll be my theme and glory. To tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. To tell Be a Mary today. Sit at his feet, listen to his voice, and go as the Holy Spirit directs you and leads you. And, and be the church, be the body of Christ, be salt and light, willing to share with any person that is willing to listen uh, that old story. I, I, I love the line in this song. I gotta conclude with this. I love to tell the story, more wonderful it seems. Um, the line where he says um, that each time he tells a story, it becomes more dear and more precious to him. Um, tell somebody the story. Even if you stand in the mirror and tell yourself the story, how Jesus saved you, it'll lift your heart. I love you. I pray God's blessings on you. Uh, may his face shine on you today. Have a great day. See you tomorrow morning.